Today, I'm going to tell everyone a little bit about the early life, career, and the legacy left behind by Jackie Robinson. He was born on January 31st, 1919 in Cairo, Georgia. He was the youngest of five siblings and raised by uh, his mother. He attended John Muir High School and Pasadena Junior College, where he participated in football, basketball, baseball, and track. At both schools, he received excellent um, acknowledgments for his abilities in athletics. From those schools, he attended UCLA in Los Angeles. He was the first university student to receive a varsity letter in all four sports, but unfortunately had to leave UCLA just prior to graduating due to financial hardships. From UCLA, uh, Jackie Robinson joined the Army, but never actually served or saw action. He was enlisted in 1942 to 1944 and was a second lieutenant in the United States Army. Uh, he was arrested and court-martialed at Fort Hood, Texas for refusing to give up his seat and move to the back of a segregated bus. Um, but because of his excellent reputation, um, efforts from friends, and the NAACP, which is a national association for the advancement of colored people, um, and several black different newspapers kind of had shed lights on, on what had happened to him, um, they kind of took his side and showed that uh, what the army had done of giving him a dishonorable discharge was wrong and they were able to get his charges acquitted and he was able to receive an honorable discharge from the army. The career of Jackie Robinson. So it all began, he uh, was playing for a black league uh, until he was recruited by uh, Branch Rickey, who was the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, the intention of his recruitment was to try and um, integrate uh, major, league, major League Baseball. And in 1946, Jackie Robinson joined the Montreal Royals, which was an all-white baseball team and had to deal with all of the racial issues at the time. He moved to Florida to begin training and had a lot of a lot of problems um, not only with his team but with fans um, you know yelling racial slurs at him and threatening his family and just kind of not giving him any break but Robinson never fought back he always tried to keep a level head and I believe that if he wouldn't have done that, then I don't think he would have been as successful as he was with his career. So he had an amazing start with the Montreal Royals. He had the leading stats in the International League with a .349 batting average and a .985 fielding average. Um, after he played for the Montreal Royals, he was recruited by the Brooklyn Dodgers and he played his first game on April 15th of 1947. This was a big step in history for Major League Baseball because it was the first game that had seen a black male in the field of baseball. So that was a pretty big step for, for him and Major League Baseball as, as a whole. Still, as he played on, um, he still received threats and harassments from fans and players. Uh, many of his teammates actually uh, threatened to sit out if Robinson played on the team, but the Dodgers manager, Leo uh, Duracher, Duracho, told them that 
he would rather trade the players refusing to play than Jackie Robinson because he thought that uh, Jackie Robinson had more skill than they provided the team with. That same year, he won the national pennant uh, for playing with the Dodgers. He also won the National League for Stolen Bases and also won Rookie of the Year. In 1947, he still led um, with the amount of stolen bases, earned the National League's Most Valuable Player Award, and finally, after the fans and everyone had seen that Jackie Robinson was actually kind of an amazing baseball player, they started to side with him, and many of them kind of ignored the fact that he was different than the rest of the players. In 1955, his team played in the World Series against the New York Yankees and won. It was the first time that the Dodgers had won the World Series. But after the World Series had been won in 1956, uh, Robinson was traded to the Giants but never played a game after, after his trade. Um, so he officially retired on January 5th of 1957. Um, and in 1962, he was the first African American baseball player to be inducted into the national, into the baseball, um, hall of fame. And in, let's see, 1972, the Dodgers actually um, retired his number, um, 42. After his retirement, well, actually, more so after his death, um, that's kind of when things started to be done in his name. So in 1947, after Robinson's death, his wife, Rachel, established the um, Jackie Robinson Foundation, which helps young people um, by providing them with scholarships and different mentoring programs to, you know, try and direct them in the right path. In 1978, a 10 square block park was in Harlem was founded um, and is now known or known as the Jackie Robinson Park in honor of the baseball player. Um, but honestly, I would have to say that what I believe is the biggest thing that Jackie Robinson left behind was not the things he left behind, but kind of the message that he left behind to people who know a little bit more about him. Just the fact that he never gave up and it really shows his character and really kind of inspires and motivates people to follow that follow that type of attitude, I would say, maybe, in a sense. If people were able to get past what's on the outside and just persevere through and just do what they believe in, then you can succeed in really anything you put your mind to. So I believe he's truly an amazing person, not only an amazing baseball player, but hopefully after today, you guys learned a little bit about his earlier career and the legacy he left behind. Thank you.